So we are in week two of our Miracles series. Look at that pretty little background. Um, and so last week, Heather was up here, and she was, t- she was talking, and uh, she was talking about Jesus feeding the 5,000, right? And so what were the three things she, she said? What were her three points? Anyone remember? Come on, guys. They're real simple. Jesus sees. Jesus Yeah, and what was the last one? Satisfies. There it is. Yep. Um, and so this week, we're continuing through this series of miracles, um, and we're going to look into Luke today. Um, but real quick, before uh, we dive into to Scripture, um, first, actually two things, but first thing, I just want to pray. All right, so if you want to bow your heads, close your eyes real quick. Um, Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for this time that we get to gather here um, and just spend time together. Uh, Lord, as I know, uh, a lot of us just need community right now more than ever. Lord, that a lot of us are just sitting in our homes doing nothing. So I thank you for this, this chance and this opportunity just to be together. Uh, Lord, I just ask you that you would speak through me, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that you'd also open the ears and the hearts of these students, Lord, that they would hear what you have to tell them. Um, Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and so the second thing I want to do real quick is I just want to tell you a little bit um, about me. Right, about, about my life, where I am, who, like, who I am, where I came from, uh, because some of you know a little bit about my past, some of you know nothing about me, and you're like, wow, that's a big redhead guy on stage, right? And so I just want to share a little bit with you guys uh, just about myself. Uh, so I, I grew up in the church. Um, oh, also, like, since I'm talking about myself, I have a brother over there, his name's Jonathan. Hey, John. Everyone say hi, it'll embarrass him. Jonathan, I love you. Um, anyways, so it, me and Jonathan, because now I'm going to include Jonathan in it because you know he's my brother. Uh, we always grew up going to church. But don't worry, the rest of the story, Jonathan, has nothing to do with you, all right? You can sit back and relax. Um, we grew up going to church. I always remember going to church every single Sunday. Uh, my mom always worked in a church, so really we didn't have a choice to go. I never had a choice. Always, all my memories from uh, my childhood involved me being in a church. Uh, and so then... Also went to school at a Christian school. I went to Norfolk Christian School um, in Norfolk. Um, if you couldn't catch on to that. And so I went to school always. And so whatever I did in my life, it was always God. Right? And so I went, uh, my weekends, what was I doing? Oh, I was at church. During the week, what was I doing? I was, at, I was at a Christian school learning about God. So everything I had to do growing up was always about God. Always. God was, God was always in my ear. I was always hearing God um, preach to me. All right, so then I got to high school. Fast forward, big jump into high school. Uh, I stopped caring. I just said, whatever. I'm grown. I can do what I want now. Right? And so what happens when you say that is that I started doing a lot of different things. Right? That's when I started going out and, and drinking and partying and, and doing things that what you guys see going on in high schoolers, like you high schoolers know what's going on around you. That's what I was doing. I was that kid that you looked at and you're like, wow, he's doing what? That was me. I was that kid who didn't care, who did what he wanted to do. Um, and if I thought I was going to be happy in the moment, I did it. Right? So that ended up getting me into a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. All right? And so then go to college. And I, all I cared about in college was playing soccer. So I went to a school where I knew I could play soccer. I knew it was a good school, a good soccer school. And I was like, I'm going to go, uh, go there. Uh, but then what happens in college is no one cares what you're doing. No, one, no one's checking in on you. You don't have parents that are going to make sure you're home at night. Right? So then it just kept spiraling downhill. Then I, I, I had people that would do it with me that would talk to me about it. We, we would go drinking um, Monday through Friday and then Saturday through Sunday. Right? Like we, we were doing all this. We were partying nonstop. Um, and that was my life. That my soccer coach looked at me and said, you're a partier. I don't trust you. That my landlord, the people I rented my, my home from, um, said, you make one more mistake. We catch you with one more thing. You're out of here. My athletic director called me and said, if you don't stop stealing, we're kicking you out of the school. 
But I had all these people looking at me and pointing out all the bad things in my life. And then about, it was like a week before Christmas, uh, I was coming home for Christmas break, and I had my friend, he approached me, and he was like, hey, oh, you want to go to this party with me? And I was like, mm, no, not, not tonight. I'm kind of tired. Don't know why I said no. Um, and so I stayed home. Everyone, all my roommates and all my friends had left our apartment complex and had just gone off for the night. All right, so I'm sitting there. I'm bored, and I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And then I look over. I'm sitting on my bed, and I look over, and I see the Bible. Now, this Bible was under my desk. The only reason I brought it was because I knew my mom would think, uh, would be happy if she saw me put a Bible in, my, in the box. Right, that Bible sat under my desk, not untouched for I don't know how many months. They had, I had uh, teammates that found out my mom worked at a church, and they were like, hey, um, so you're one of those Christians, aren't you? Or they would ask questions about Christianity. I would just sit there and say, I don't know, or no. Never owned up to being a Christian. But then I looked at the Bible and I said, you know, I'm bored. Why not read it? So then I flip open the Bible and I start reading. Um, and then in that moment, fall on my bed and start crying. Because I realized how messed up, how terrible my life was, the mistakes that I was making, immediately full of regret. Because when I look back on my life the past five, six years, I was ashamed of who I'd become, ashamed of, of who I was. And so as we, as we jump into uh, what we're going to actually or continue to talk about tonight is um, that a lot of you may have stories like mine. Maybe some of you are doing the things I was doing right now. Um, but I just want to look at, at, at Luke chapter 5. And so what we see here is Jesus is teaching uh, to, to crowds of people, and, but also what he's doing in this time is he's choosing his 12 disciples. He's going around and saying, I want you to be one of my disciples, right? And so if we look in Luke chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 1. It says, Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Generasat, Siret, uh, Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and was washing their nets, right? So he's teaching. They're, they keep getting closer. He's backing up. He's on the beach. And he looks over. There's these two boats. The fishermen are out washing their nets. Um, and then he says, he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked, asked him to put out the boat a little distance from the land. And he sat down and continued teaching to the crowds from the boat. Now, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Hey, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon responded and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. But we'll do as you say and let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught a great quantity of fish and their miracles began, or their miracles? Where am I? Their nets began to tear and they, uh, so they signaled to their partners in the, uh, in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats to the point where they were sinking. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement has seized him and all his companions uh, because of the catch of fish which they had taken. And likewise also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, uh, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, for now you'll be catching people. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything. And followed him. All right, so in this moment, this miracle that we see is, is Jesus tells Simon and, and his buddies, hey, go a little further into the water and throw out the net. And they're like, yo, man, like, we've been fishing all night, all morning. There's nothing out there. Like, they're all gone. They're not out there. And so the part that I, that I, I somehow missed uh, when I read this a while ago was that when they caught the fish, they were bringing in the fish, that they had two boats there. These two boats were filled and started sinking because of how many fish there were on there. So that's how many fish were in those boats. Right, these are fishing boats, so they expect to be carrying quite a bit of weight with all these fish, but these boats began to sink. And so I know some of us are like, wow, so cool. You caught a lot of fish. Um, right, and so we look at this miracle, and sometimes it gets overlooked. 
But when we look at this miracle and we look at the why of this miracle and what was Jesus doing, like why was he doing this miracle? And we look at what he was doing and what he was doing was calling his disciples. He was calling these ordinary nobody fishermen to be one of his 12 disciples. Right? And then if we look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, it says, And Jesus went out from there. He saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth, and he said uh, to him, Follow me. And he got up and he followed him. All right, so now we see that Jesus also, um, one of his disciples is a tax collector. Right, these ta- tax collectors were, were basically thieves. Right, they, would, they would go up to people and they'd be like, hey, you got to pay your taxes. You owe, well, let's see, the government says you, you owe us like 50. Uh, you're going to owe us 100. Right, and they would take that extra 50, they'd put it in their pocket and not care again and just walk away. They would take extra money from people. But what's also crazy is that other disciples, another disciple uh, was what we call like a zealot. Now, I had to look up this word too, so don't feel stupid if you don't know what this word means. Um, but what it says is zealots are, are people who are attempting basically to overthrow the government. So one of Jesus' disciples, one of these people trying to overthrow a government. But what they also did was they didn't just overthrow the government, that he was also a hitman. Now, if you don't know what hitman is, that's when someone comes to you and says, hey, go kill that person. This is who Jesus' disciples were. Right? We see fishermen. We see tax collectors. We see they're liars, they're thieves. We see uh, zealots. We, we see murderers. We see uh, people who are trying to overthrow the government. Not for, like, the right reasons. This is who we see that are Jesus' 12 closest disciples, his 12 uh, basically best friends on earth. This is who he chooses. Right, you see, the people uh, Jesus chose to be the, the stars of Christianity were normal. That most of them were fishermen and just normal people. See, these people were nobodies. Right, that these people, no one looked twice at them. They just put their head down, they went to work, they came back home. These were not people that if, back in that time you were like, hey, we need to pick people who are going to start uh, Christianity, start this big spread across the whole world. These would not be the people you would pick. But here we see Jesus picking them. Here we, we see Jesus saying, I want you, come follow me. Personally calling them out. Saying, hey, come and follow me. And so I got to think of these, these disciples are like, okay. Like, sure, like, I'll follow you. Right? Like, they don't think they're anybody. I bet if you asked them, they'd be like, I don't think I'm anyone special. I'm never really going to do anything big and, and mighty in my life. But here we're saying, hey, God, I got a plan. God is saying to them, hey, I got a plan for you. Hey, come follow me. I got something planned out for your life. Hey, you're going to do something great. And so I bet if I looked at you guys and I was standing right there and I looked you in the eyes and I said, you're going to do something great. That God is going to use you in, in so many different ways. You would look at me and be like, you're crazy. Like, who, who am I that God is going to do big and wonderful uh, things through? Who am I that's going to be able to, to spread Christianity, to spread the gospel to other people? Who am I? But see, that's who I thought I was. That when, when, I, when I came back to Jesus and I was like, Lord, take my life. Like, like Lord, uh, my life is yours. Take it and do with you what you want with it. Then when I came back home that summer, I got an internship here. And then Caleb was like, hey, uh, your internship's about to end. What do you think about joining staff with us? And I was like, whoa, No. Right? It took me a week to, to get back to him and, and, and answer him and be like, sure, like, I'll do that. Because of, of my past, and I knew who I, who I had been. And I was like, there's no way I can work at a church. There's no way God can use me to do anything. I am beat up. I am, I am trash. And I looked back at my life, and, and all I saw was, was regret and pain. 
And see, most of you, some of you are like that. Some of you are, have, have changed your life or, or have done things and you're like, I regret that. That when I look back on the things I've done, that it gives me pain. But there's no way that God can use a beat up person like me. Some of you are like the fishermen. Some of you are sitting there saying, who am I? I'm no one big. I'm no one important. I'm just a normal person. See, no matter what, God will use you. No matter what your past was, no matter who you are now, no matter um, how normal you think you are, no matter how uh, rough your past was, your, how big your mistakes were, that we saw murderers, we saw uh, thieves and liars and, and just normal fishermen start the spread of Christianity. Be 12 of God's disciples. Be the only 12. I need you guys to stop putting limits on God and just follow him. Stop putting these limits on God when we're saying, hey, he can't use me. There's no way I'm too beaten. I'm too normal. He can't use me. There's no way he's going to use me. Stop putting those limits on God because he can and he will use you. All we have to do is just let him. But we put these limits on God. And we say, no, you can't. I'm not good enough. There's no way you can use me. No way you can ever use me. You hear God saying, yes, I can and I will. So that's, that's the challenge I give you guys to go out with. Stop putting limits on God because no matter what, God will use you. Yes, you may not be responsible for the, for the spread of Christianity into uh, the unknown parts of the world, but God will use you. That it looks different for each and every one of you. But God will use you. So I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to head off. And uh, in the small groups. Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for um, not caring about who we are. Lord, that you don't care about our past, Lord, if, or if we're too normal if, or if we think we're nobody, Lord. But I thank you uh, for choosing us. Lord, I thank you for, uh, for using us, Lord, that, um, Lord, that you love us regardless of who we are. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I ask you to help all of us in this room tonight, Lord, that, that we will stop putting these limits on you, Lord, that we will stop saying you can't do that. There's no way you can do that, Lord, but we will say, hey, Lord, use me. Hey, Lord, here's my life. Take it and use it how you want. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.